about a year ago, a really close friend of mine died. And Enrico was a professional, very accomplished photographer with a lot of National Geographic credits to his name. And a couple of days after his funeral, his wife Martha was talking to my partner Ashton and saying, Ashton, what am I going to do? Enrico has left a million slides. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with them. So Ashton comes home in a panic because she knows that I've got 50 boxes in the house and at least two, 250 boxes somewhere else in storage. And she says, Bob, if you died tomorrow, what would we do? <laughs> we have no idea what's in those boxes. And so the next day I was thinking about this and I, it was a very disturbing image because I suddenly had this idea that uh, I could suddenly see Ashton and one of our kids uh, standing around one of these boxes, picking something up and looking at it and saying, why in God's name did Bob save this one? And without any sort of word from me, they were either gonna have to toss it in the trash or maybe if they thought there was some value, they could put it on eBay. But either way, I realized what a terrible, terrible burden to lay on people I actually cared about. So, next couple of days go by, and I wake up in the middle of the night in that proverbial cold sweat. I've had a nightmare. And the nightmare is basically, I see all of my boxes moldering away in the basement somewhere, not my basement, some other basement, sort of like uh, Charles Foster Kane's rosebud sled, right? Where nobody knows what its value is until they toss it into the fire, when of course they still don't know what its value is. And I'm, so I'm sitting there in bed, I'm, I'm sort of nervous from this nightmare, and suddenly my conscious brain takes over, and this idea, it's a strange idea, pops into my head of doing a two-month performance piece in a museum or a gallery. Now, before I explain the piece to you, I want to sort of give you a sense of what's in these boxes. This is a picture from, I put a bunch up on a shelf somewhere, and you can see there's, there's tech, there's art, there's weird stuff, there's trilobites. Um, there's a whole shitload of uh, tech from the early 80s. These are the banal and frankly extremely ideological problematic books that I read when I was 10 or seven or eight, which uh, would have screwed me up, I think, completely if I hadn't read these books when I got older. And this is a picture I took in China in 1976 when the Cultural Revolution was still in full swing. It was in Shanghai. I started Criterion in the, in the early 80s and this was its original logo of a book turning into a disc. And there's a whole long and really interesting history about that. I used to go to Japan every year for about 30 years and I would always collect uh, toys and robots that I'd bring home to my kids. These are political posters from the 60s and 70s. And of course, being a child of, the, of that period, I have a pretty extensive vinyl collection. Um, so imagine this. I'm in a museum, in a, in a room in a museum, and it's sort of set up like a living room. There are comfortable chairs, there are tables, there are bookcases, there's wall space. And one by one, I start opening the boxes and take things out, and I'm curating as I go. If something is interesting enough to me, or I think it'll be interesting to other people, I'll put it in its appropriate place, books on bookcases, paintings on walls, etc. And then visitors to the space are able to go through the objects that I've put out. They can pick them up. They can even rummage through the boxes of discards. But more, most importantly, I'm gonna go up to visitors and talk to them and I'm gonna encourage them to talk to me about the objects they find interesting. 
is these conversations are actually the core element of this performance piece. I want to talk to people about the objects because I know that that's going to deepen my understanding and our understanding of them. So this idea for this piece, it, it didn't actually come simply from the fact that a friend died. It came from a, a, a deeper place, something I've been thinking about for a long time, that humanity is sort of, sort of up the creek at the moment without a paddle. We're in this really complex transitional period. I mean, I suppose people have been able to say that about human life ever since the beginning. It's always in a transitional period. But this time looks particularly difficult. And I don't see how we're going to get to a future worth living in unless we're able to really dig deeply into understanding how we got here and especially about where we'd like to go. Um, think of it as an experiment. What kind of social value can be derived from this process of opening boxes up in public where I work with people to deepen our collective understanding of the historical and cultural context that these objects represent? Because memories and history, they're not actually fixed things. Right? I, I can put facts into the cloud, I can store pictures in a box, but their meaning over time has to be continually processed and reprocessed. For example, on a sort of trivial level, I mean, that's why every generation we get a new biography of Abraham Lincoln. It's why they keep remaking movies. Each generation has to understand the past given everything that's happened since. All right, our, our understanding keeps developing over time. What's interesting is that this processing is at its best when it's a group effort. Think about Wikipedia for a minute. I'm a huge fan of Wikipedia, just for fun. How many of you actually think Wikipedia is a good thing? Okay, it's a little bit mellow on the cheering, but okay. So, think about Wikipedia articles for a minute. There's a surface, but the really interesting stuff about the Wikipedia article is in the history, in the interstices, at, at those flashpoints where people are arguing back and forth. That's where the truth is, because the tru truth is something that is socially constructed. So the more that people engage around big and important questions, the deeper and better our understanding of them is going to be. Um, an example, uh, just yesterday, I had an intense conversation with somebody about this picture. I'm not going to get into the back and forth of it, but it was very clear at the end of it that we both had a slightly enhanced and a different but and also slightly enhanced and I would argue better understanding of what this picture represented. And if, later, if anybody wants to talk to me, come, we'll talk about it. Um, one of the subjects that I hope gets discussed a lot is the changing nature of our relationship to objects as we hurtle into the sort of digital unknown. So when I was a kid, television was a, this big cubic object that sat in the living room. And now, I don't know, I haven't had a television for 30 years. Television is a, is a content category. Uh, when, I was, when I was young, I started collecting vinyl, and those were phenomenal objects. I loved to hold them in my, I would lie on the couch, hold it in my hand, and you know, read the liner notes and gaze at the pictures on it. My kids bought CDs, ripped them right away, and threw away the object. And my grandchildren now, they just get their media from this sort of virtual infinite jukebox. They have absolutely zero connection to objects when it comes to media. So this question of what is going to be, what is going to be our relationship to objects as we go forward? And think for a minute, when I, objects, think physical. I mean, our bodies, what, what is going to be the, the, the role of the body? Will humans have bodies going into the future? Do we want bodies? 
You know, these are all big, big questions that we're going to actually have to answer someday. And I would argue that if we don't start talking about them, we're not necessarily going to end up the place we want. So I've been suggesting that you know, opening up boxes and reviewing a life could be a good conversation starter. And I, I even think that if, it, you know, if what I'm doing is successful and some other people pick it up, that it might actually become a ritual someday. And you might, you know, regularly, libraries and museums might hold events where they invite people to come and open up their boxes and review their lives. But I don't want you to fixate on the boxes it's, and, the, and the objects. It's not the point. The, the, the important thing to focus on is the importance to the important thing to focus on is the importance of talking to each other about really important things, serious things. And don't worry about the boxes. Be creative. Try to, in your life, on a daily basis, try to think about, you know, have I had an important conversation today? You know, what did I do at the dinner table? You know, did I give a dinner party? Did I talk to somebody? I, I, I'm on the, I live in New York, so I, I'm on the subway all the time. And I love turning to the person next to me and actually starting a serious conversation. I cannot tell you how many times it's happened and how fantastic it is. We don't talk enough to each other about what's actually important. And the, my performance piece is one way I want to do it, but I basically challenge you all to dig deep and think of ways to do it in your lives. Thank you very much.